In this video, we're going to be going over how to copy on a new Sharp MFP. This tutorial will cover common copy settings, as well as some advanced settings to benefit workflow. So starting off, we want to select our copy icon. Now the way I describe this is all our common functionalities are based off here to the left. First is our color mode, and here we can choose if we want our jobs defaulted to auto color, full color, or black or white. Otherwise, on the bottom right hand corner, we're just being diligent of choosing between a black and white start or a color start. Next is our original setting, and this can be left on auto because the sensors on the document feeder are already detecting the size of our original. Same thing goes for our paper select tab. We can leave this set to auto, or we can choose the tray we want to pull from or choose our bypass tray. The next setting is where we're going to find our two sided copying. From here, we can choose one to one sided, one to two, two to two, or two to one. Also, on the right, Sharp is image driven, so you're going to see exactly what's going to happen with your copy. When I select CA over here to the right, that just means clear all. It's going to deselect everything and go back to our defaults. So, the next setting is our copy ratio tab, and this is where we can do any reducing or enlarging. So Sharp has actually provided us with some preset conversions and percentages and also a manual percentage bar. But in my opinion, the easiest thing to do is just go and select auto image, hit OK, and then go back to your paper select and then choose the tray with the size that you either want to go up in size or down in size too. So because we selected that auto image, it's actually going to be figuring out the aspect ratio of the image for us. Next is our exposure setting. In here, we can manually lighten or darken our original, or we can just leave it set to auto. Some great features in here also include copy of a copy and light original. Copy of a copy would be if you have a bad original, it's really faded down and tattered. If you select copy of a copy and feed that original through, it's going to darken and saturate it back to its original state. So you're pretty much bringing the document back to life. Similar to that would be light original. That's if, say, a customer came in with a form they filled out in pencil. It's only going to target those light areas and then darken and saturate. If your unit has a finisher on it, the last setting you'll find here is your staple sort. From here, you can choose if you want one staple, two staples, and off here to the right, it's image driven, so you're going to see exactly where they're going to go. This current unit that I have here in our demo room is a inner finisher, so it has a staple to staple feature. This feature will give your copy a top left crimp without using a staple for anything five sheets or less. Lastly, I'm going to be going over some advanced features in the copy function. These features can be found in the Others tab. Sharp has provided plenty of great settings in this tab, and I'm going to be highlighting three of the most commonly used. The first is Blank Page Skip. If we select this feature and we select Skip Blank Page, if we have one and two sided documents in the document feeder, it will know to skip over the blank sides of the one sided documents. Getting back into our others tab, now we're going to select our stamp feature. So when we select stamp, say we have documentation that came without a date, came without page numbering, we can actually add that right to our document. So here I'm selecting the format of my date, I can choose the layout where I want my date to be placed on the document, and I could also select page numbering if I want to add that as well. Again, choosing where I want my page numbers on my document. And then I can also add a stamp feature. So say something's confidential, priority, do not copy. I can actually add a physical stamp to my document. I can also scroll over and select this as a watermark. So I'll get those same presets off to the left. And then it's going to go in the center of the page behind the text rather than over the text, just like a watermark. One more time back into our Others tab. And we're going to select our Card Shot feature. After we select this, we're going to turn this on, and then we're going to check our adjust the paper size box. If you don't check this box, that's fine. It's just going to keep it at the actual size of the card. From here, we're going to open up our document feeder, and we're going to put our card down front facing to the top left corner. Close our document feeder, and this time we're going to select a color start. We're going to get a read end message that we want to ignore because we want to open up the document feeder and we want to flip our card over and get the back side of the card. And again, we just want to put this at the top left corner. Once we close our document feeder, we're going to select Color Start. Now that we've scanned both sides of our card, 
we can select read end and the job is automatically going to send out. As you can see here, because we checked that adjusted paper size box, it got the front and the back of the card and blew it up to the size of the sheet. And that's going to be it for this video. If you have any questions or need further assistance, please feel free to reach out to your Centric Corporate Trainer and we'll be happy to assist.